Hi, so this is really a bit of a presentation. It's another one of those texts that we've had lying around for ages and done nothing with. And we've dusted it off because we want to do something with it. And we're really looking for somebody to do something with it. With, if you get what I mean. So we would look at um, vending in the know-how for the tech into an existing company for something like shares, something like that. So what is it? Well, it's actually um, a biodegradable plastic made out of milk, tea, and this stuff, hemp. And it makes this really tough, actually unbelievably tough, plastic plate. Now, milk is, is a very venerable source of plastics. It's been in existence for many, many years, and it's really easy to make in its basic form. All you really do is buy yourself some skimmed milk, uh, dissolve it, add a little bit of baking soda to it, and then give it a stir, heat it a little bit, chuck in some lemon juice or vinegar, and you'll get this kind of white curve. On top of those white curds will be a, a sort of a yellowish liquid. And that liquid's all the fats and sugars and rubbish. You throw the liquids away, take the white curds, give them a squeeze, good and hard, and you've got your milk plastic. And that's its very basic form. It's not very usable like that because the minute it gets wet, it goes back to its curds and just falls apart. So you need something to cure it. Uh, and what they used to cure it um, years ago was formaldehyde. You basically soak that blank in formaldehyde and the formaldehyde begins to cure it from the outside in. So the thicker your blank, the longer it took. And it could take anything from weeks to months. Then you would dry it and you'd have your bit that you were looking for. So it's pretty much restricted to sheets and rods and buttons and belt buckles, that kind of thing. It died a death because um, other better materials came out. But of course we have a different set of problems now. Now we've got so much spoiled plastic and microplastic around that isn't rotting away that we're really worried about it and looking desperately for materials that can replace traditional plastics. And so milk plastic has enjoyed a revival recently. From about the 1960s on, people have been looking at it again and how to use this stuff and how to overcome some of the disadvantages. And of course, we weren't the uh, only ones looking at it. Loads of people are looking at it. If you go on Google Scholar and put in case in plastic, you'll find a ton of research on it. And we were looking at that, making a composite out of hemp and milk. And the problem, one of the problems really, is the um, formaldehyde curing process. Uh, and we looked at curing it with tea. And this uh, really amused the hell out of me, that we could make a viable plastic from hemp, milk, and tea, which I thought just, was just great. Now, if you're worried about using a food stuff as a plastic, like milk, for instance, you'd think, well, that's something people eat, it's not something you should be looking at as a plastic. But the truth is, about 50% of the milk we produce is actually thrown away. It's just spoilage from things like washing out the pipes, washing out the tanks, uh, emptying the uh, containers, spillages, uh, spoilage generally from leaving it too long, all that kind of stuff. It works out about 50% apparently, it's just thrown away because it's unfit for human consumption. And that was my thought, if we could use that milk that was unfit for human consumption, we'd have a huge waste of resource that we could use to make a plastic along with hemp to replace an awful lot of the plastics we're currently using. Now, if we use formaldehyde, of course, it doesn't really help. But if we use tea, what we end up doing is creating a biodegradable plastic. So if you take this stuff and put it in a compost heap for about two weeks, it's gone. It, because it's a protein, it's just literally gone. It won't actually go into the environment forming microplastics. It gets eaten, which is kind of like really, really cool, making it truly biodegradable. Other experiments have been run where they found that this stuff still has problems in that it's an, an awful lot of wastage. Now what we've done is taken this and add some graphene, some tea, to some milk with some hemp, and we get a product actually where the edge bits can be remoulded. You remould it by heat and pressure just like you do any other plastic. And at the end of the day what we make is this granular material here which is the milk plastic and we can press that into its form here and it makes an incredibly tough material. And here's a little bit of it, and I, I can't break that little bit. But that bit is actually brittle, which is why you put the hemp in it to stop that brittle. It's a bit like a standard resin with fiberglass. It's the same kind of idea, does the same kind of job, but does it with natural products. Now, this is waterproof. I know that because I boiled this for 24 hours in some hot water. I just left it on for 24 hours, 8 degrees centigrade with the top on it came back and there'd been no change, which is pretty awesome, really. 
So it solved some of the major problems that were our casing plastics and milk plastics were suffering from. It's now waterproof, you can reuse the scrap because you can reheat it and repress it into something. Uh, it comes in this granular form or powder form, so it will actually go through um, extrusions, which I think is really cool. And if we combine it with hemp, we get this fibrous material that's really incredibly tough and resists breakages to the same degree that a um, glass reinforced plastic would do. So we think we've come up with an awesome material here using, as I say, milk tea and hemp, which is just amazing. And we're very open to actually exploring this further to see what we could do with this because I can see a lot of things that could be done with that. One thing is that the um, process conditions really matter. If you make changes in the processes, actually you can make this material from something that's uh, really quite rubbery, almost like a Macintosh or a tyre, right the way through to something that's hard and brittle, almost like a polyurethane resin that's used in fiberglass. So there's a huge range of, uh, of the qualities that this can be modified with, depending on how you process it. And then you can make composites from it as well. So we're really quite proud of that material and, and to a degree a, a little bit embarrassed we've left it so long. So if you look back on the video history, you'll see all kinds of things that we did with this. Going years back, we even made a bulletproof version of it and took it off and shot some AK-47 rounds at it when we were in Canada. So there's an awful lot of stuff that we've done on this. We have just left it. But we brought it back out again now um, to remake it. And this I made today. I made actually about a kilo and a half in a couple of hours, so it's quite easy to make as it happens. I made that today and dusted it off and decided to do a video presentation on it to invite people, should they be interested, in, in uh, looking at making this composite from milk tea and hemp, because obviously the hemp fibres are, are giving it the extra flexibility and strength, the reinforcement that we would need to the brittle version of it to stop it breaking. It's about um, 0.95 grams per cubic centimetre is the density of it, so it's a little bit lighter than things like uh, nylon and HDPE, but a little bit heavier than things like um, oak and, and cherry and wood. Anyway, I thought that would be of interest to you. I hope it was. If you've got any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. And thank you very much for watching.